Not my usual list of military rifles for sale, but I had the opportunity to do a review or an overview of this military Humvee. This one actually came off of a base in Tennessee, and this is an M988 AM General Humvee. This one was built in 1988. As you can see, it's a soft top. You can get the slant backs, and there's obviously you can get the hard doors for these. But the soft top and, and soft doors are a lot easier to remove. So if you're in North Carolina, where it gets to be 102 degrees and 90 to 100 percent humidity, so it feels like you're in uh, a jungle somewhere, taking those doors off to get any breeze you can, especially in this that does not have air conditioning, is extremely nice. These have a bit of an interesting starting procedure, and I'll go through that here pretty quick. It is a 6.2 diesel. The military originally had, on all of these, and it's still to this day, the ignition switch is literally a little lever that you turn to the run position and then the start button, or start position to turn it on. Uh, there is no keyed ignition, so if you wanted to steal one of these, it'd be fairly easy. This one has had a keyed ignition installed. Being a diesel with glow pl plugs, you're going to push it to run. You're going to wait for that wait light to turn off. It generally takes about 10 seconds. And you're free to crank it to start and turn it on. Obviously being military, there's no fills here. There's no air conditioning. The slant backs generally do have air conditioning. Soft tops generally do not. <coughs> and this is your selector for how you want your headlights and other lights to work. So switching with the unlock button or the unlock lever up and then switching it over to stop light only and then you have your driving light. This lever over here will control your headlights. Now you can have the vehicle where only the front lights work or only the back lights work or only the uh, one of the front lights works um, just for military purposes. You would think the military would have some sort of security feature more advanced than this, but still to this day, I believe it's just the cable lock on the steering steering column there. Now this one has had some upgrades so that uh, it's not quite so easy to take off with. That throttle that I just pointed at is actually a really antiquated form of cruise control. And you actually cannot use it like a normal cruise control where you press the brake and it turns off the cruise control. You have to manually push it back in. Now that was the snorkel. These are designed to fully submerge. As long as the engine can breathe and you can breathe, these things will keep on going. But I'll get to that here in a bit. To get the hood up, we're going to have to first remove the brush guard, which we just did there, and a latch on either side of the hood. Push to run, wait for the 
wait light to turn off and you're free to start it up. Now once their engine is heated up, you really don't need to use the blow cut, like it's generally for a cold start. 6.2 diesel. The newer ones generally have a 6.5, which are a little bit more reliable, but this one has had no issues. smoking dope, right? So to start it, like most other cars, put your foot on the brake, drive, and push the emergency brake down. Something interesting about these, these do not have, yes that is the horn, very ferocious, sounds like a Willys Jeep. These do not have a parking on the transmission. You have your emergency brake and that's it. So the military designed these to pretty much ford anything, so if I wanted to take it in that pond right there, I could, and as long as I was able to breathe, and as long as the engine was able to breathe with the snorkel, it could sit there all day until it ran out of gas. The problem is, and this is, this is something a lot of people don't think of, is when you are trying to go into a pond or something like that, it's usually mud, thick mud on the bottom that you're going to get stuck in. So while it will run there, uh, it's best to, say, take it on uh, through a river that has a rock bottom or something like that that it, tires can actually pull through. But I hope you enjoyed the footage here. From here on out, it's just going to be me driving it around for a bit. Nothing that interesting, but hey, if you got time to kill, uh, click the subscribe button, and thank you so much for watching.